Does your house have old ass smoke detectors like this? These hardwired smoke detectors, when they get old, they go off randomly. They're just less reliable. You should be changing them about every 10 years. Look at that nasty thing. Look at it. Today, we're gonna go over changing these. We're gonna go step by step so you can do it at home. And we'll also go over installing combination smoke and carbon monoxide hardwire detectors. First thing you're gonna need, obviously, is the new smoke alarms. These are uh, smoke detectors. They're hardwired, that's the little symbol for them. In the store, you'll either see this or the battery symbol. This is what you want. Now, these do have battery backups, but this means they're hardwired. The nice thing about hardwired ones, if one goes off, they all go off. These are about 20 bucks for the smoke ones. And these are combination smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. These are about 40 bucks. And again, they're hardwired. Now you can install just these throughout the whole house, but I think that's overkill. So we're gonna put the combos in the main areas, like the hall and the living room. And we're gonna put these in the bedroom. If your house has a gas stove or any other gas appliances, like this house does, go ahead and throw in at least two of these uh, carbon monoxide detectors in the main areas of the home. All right, let's go over the tools you're gonna need to change out your smoke alarms. First thing I would recommend is this breaker finder. I went over this in the last video. You're gonna need a screwdriver. I like to use one with interchangeable bits so I don't have to carry a bunch of them around. And I can take the bits out and put them in your drill. You're gonna need some wire strippers, multimeter, and whenever I'm on a ladder, I like to use a little waste bag. All right, let's start with our first smoke detector here. So we're just gonna rotate this counterclockwise. It says right here to do it. Check yours out, make sure it says the same thing. And then once we feel it stop, we're just gonna pull down on it. Okay, you're gonna be left with these wires. And sometimes you get lucky and the new smoke detector can use this base and plug right in here. Our base is kind of yellow, so we kind of don't want to do that. But let's check and see if we could if we wanted to. Checking out our box here. Let's check it out. We can see that our new plug that's right here is completely different than our old one. So we got no dice, we're gonna have to change it out. We can also see that our plate is a much bigger on the new one, so that's gotta go too. First step we wanna do is we wanna get that power shut off. So we're gonna use our kit. We're gonna use our breaker finder from the last video. Okay, this red wire is gonna be our trigger that sets off all the smoke alarms. This orange one here on the pigtail. Sometimes that trigger wire is orange and sometimes it's red, but it's right here. Let's undo this neutral one. Don't touch the hot at all. Careful not to touch these wires. So if you need to figure out which breaker a circuit like this is on, and um, it doesn't have a, an outlet, use this little adapter. And this, and this is the little accessory kit that you can buy with the breaker finder. Let's go ahead and hook our hot up here. Just like that, careful not to touch anything metal. And then we'll just plug our little transmitter right in there. We can see our transmitter light is red, so we'll go ahead and just let that hang. Let's take our receiver and go out to the breaker panel. We'll take our little red tie off our receiver, and let's go down our breaker panel. We gotta scan the whole thing first. And we start from the top. It looks like we're signaling on this one. It looks like we're getting nothing. So, it looks like this one was the smoke detectors. And we can see that our transmitter light is off. So we're good to continue. See that trick right there? You see what that thing just did? The little cover slipped off of that. And if that's live, I can get knocked out pretty good. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to remove that plate. So we're going to use a Phillips head. Sometimes you can get away with just backing these off a little bit. And then rotate the plate. If your plate's stuck, take a razor blade and run it around the outside. Right in here, like this. Otherwise, you'll, you'll mess up your paint and it could peel and you could be in trouble. Okay, so we're going to pull down on that. And then we're just gonna pull our little plate off. Let's remove all three wire nuts from the hot, the neutral, and the trigger wire. Let's go ahead and pull those off. Okay. So we got our old pigtail off. Let's connect up our new one. So we're just gonna reuse those same wire nuts.
connect up our hot. Then you're going to twist until you feel a sharp rise in torque and you start to see the wires twist. Let's take our neutral and hook that up. We're just going to hold the wires parallel, take our wire nut, put it on there. Give the wire just a nice light tug, make sure it's not coming out of there. Now, if you're only installing one detector, they got this little cap on the trigger wire. So we're going to pull that off because we are installing multiple detectors. And our box has the red wire, so let's go ahead and hook it up. Okay, give that a slight tug, give them all a tug, and make sure they're good connections, they look good. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to push these up in the box. And what we're going to do is we're going to orientate our wire nuts upwards. We want umbrellas, not buckets. So if there's ever a water leak around here, we want the water, we want these to be little umbrellas, keep the water out of the connection. We don't want them to be buckets holding water in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here like this. And we want to leave our little pigtail hanging down like that. Now let's take our new plate, put it over our screws. You have a few different sizing options you see here. So we see that that doesn't fit our span. So we can use this gap, let's see that. That looks pretty good. We can rotate it that way. And there's another spacing option if you rotate it the other way. But this is the one that fits us. And we're just gonna use a screwdriver so that we don't crack our plate. Don't go crazy. Just barely tight, just like that. This is our combination smoke and carbon monoxide detector. When we open a little bag, a little snack falls out. It says do not eat, because they, they want it all for themselves. What's cool is they come with free shower caps. What you can do is you can wear these for the job to keep the dust that comes out of that box, the drywall dust and old construction stuff, out of your hair. Here's our combination smoke and carbon monoxide. It says it right there. Okay, here's our carbon monoxide detector. We're gonna plug it in and we're gonna push this in until we hear it snap. Little click. You're gonna feed the wires up there nice. Nicely, as we push it up. And we got directions here. It says twist on is right it's this way. Just like that. Now to release these, this, this type, you have a little latch here, you push this in, and then you can release it, just like that. If you want to clock these, let's say I want to clock it in this direction. These do have these little tabs. And what we can do is take that out. There's a little nipple in this hole here. Pop that out. And now this thing is slid into that hole and it's locked and it's clocked that way. And the final step, once you turn the power back on, is to pull out this tab. Let's install a standard smoke alarm without the O2 sensor because they are slightly different now. First thing we have to do is look at which way to rotate it. There's an arrow here that says rotate it counterclockwise to remove. And then pull it straight down. And we'll pull the connector out. Here's our connector. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to loosen up our two Phillips head screws holding on our plate. Now we'll pull our plate down. If your plate is sticking hard, run a razor blade around here if it's painted on. Mine's not painted on, so I'm going to just pull it straight down. Now I'm going to rotate it. Let's open up our new one. We've got our wiring harness. And we got the detector itself. We see that this one actually, to turn, to take off, you rotate it clockwise. So we're just gonna take that off its base. And we see that we have several screw patterns. So we gotta try to match up the screw patterns to figure out which one of these to pop out. 
So we're just going to take our screwdriver and we're going to punch out the two that we think it is. And pull out the little piece of plastic insert. Okay, now we're going to see if it lines up. And it does. If you make a mistake, you can pop out more of these. It's not the end of the room. Let's concentrate on our wires real quick. If your wire nuts are in good shape, you can reuse them, otherwise replace them. Look down inside your wire nut. If you see wires stuck in there, you're gonna have to replace them. If they came out clean, oftentimes you can reuse them. I'm just gonna hold the wires parallel and start a wire nut. Tighten until the wires themselves, the insulated portion of the wire has a few twists in it. Okay, that one looks good. Now we'll connect up our signal wire. This is the common trip wire that sets off all the other ones. Okay, now that we've got our harness connected up, we're just gonna go, we're gonna take our wire nuts and point them upwards because we want umbrellas not buckets. So let's go ahead and push those up. And we'll fit our ring that we punched out earlier. Rotate that on there. And take our Phillips head screwdriver. Tighten the screws up. Don't go crazy on these. You don't want to go distorting the plate or anything or you won't be able to get your smoke detector on there. Now we're going to make sure our flag doesn't go under there and get trapped. We're going to have it go this way. Let's plug it in. Smoke alarm. Make sure it's fully seated, just like this. You should hear a couple clicks. It's fully seated now. And we're going to feed our wires up there nice and easy. You're going to have to rotate this one until it pops up in there. And you're going to go counterclockwise to your click. All right, when you go to install these, you see that little hole? You can line that up with the off, rotate it counterclockwise till that hole appears. That hole is for this tamper resistant pin that you stick in there. Here's our little tamper resistant pin. We're just going to stick that in there. There you go. So it pushes in until it's flush. The edge. And like I said, we'll pull this flag once the power's back on to the whole system. Okay, now that we got all of the smoke alarms installed, we can turn it back on. But first, I'm just going to label this breaker since we know this is fire alarm. Let's go ahead and turn that back on. I heard all of them beep. We see the green light is on, so we'll go ahead and pour a little tab. And that one's good to go. Tab comes out like that. Low battery. All right, so you heard it say low battery. Let's pull this. And that should be the end of all the beeping. Looks like these smoke detectors are original to the house. It was built in 2001, and it looks like these are from April 18th, 2001. Or 2801. Oh my God. Anyways, another nice bonus of these things is if you take one of these, they have batteries in them, and you put one of these bad boys somewhere where, uh, you know, you hide this at your friend's house, when that battery dies in a few years or whatever, they'll start to get that noise right there and drive them insane. And they won't know where it comes from, like throw it, throw it in their crawl space or under their bed or something. Well, they might find it under their bed, but you get the idea. You get these bonus things that you can, you know, Put it under their car seat, something like that. It's a free gag. It's a real hoot. Go do that to your friends. All right, I'll catch you guys later.